Good morning, one and all. I'm Dr. Dabashish here, uh, working as a fellow in pediatric rheumatology. Thanks to my mentor, Dr. Anand sir, for giving me the opportunity to speak on GI mimickers who get who often gets treated as a juvenile idiopathic arth arthritis by many of us for a pretty long time with any anti rheumatic drugs without much benefit. So coming to the first case, it is a six-year-old female child with swelling of the multiple joint associated with pain and difficulty in squatting. She had been symptomatic since the six months of age. She was first born out of a second degree consanguineous marriage and systemic examination were normal. She was a well-thriving child and on musculoskeletal examination, she had bilateral swelling and restriction of movement of the bilateral knee as well as the bilateral wrist. There is swelling of the extensor tendon of the bilateral wrist. On careful examination, we could see there was fixed flexion deformity of the bilateral fifth digits as well as the index finger. So we screened all her previous investigation in which autoimmune workup was done, which are negative. All the inflammatory parameters were negative, including screening of all the systems. So we went ahead with doing a skeletal survey in which and we found out bilateral acetabular cyst in the pelvic X-ray bilaterally as well as coxavera that is decrease in the angle between the shaft of the femur and the neck of the femur. The second characteristic finding which we got is the in the x-ray of the hand is uh, soft tissue swelling camptodactyly and squaring of the heads of the metacarpal as well metacarpal as well as the phalanges. There was significant joint effusion in the in the x-ray of the knees. So we went ahead with doing the whole exome sequencing, which revealed defect in the PRG4 gene, which is likely homozygous, and it is an autosomal recessive condition, which is known as CACP syndrome, and the mother was heterozygous, whereas the brother was also homozygous, who had similar features of camptodactyly. So coming to the CACP syndrome, that is camptodactyly, arthropathy, coxavara, and pericarditis, where the basic pathology lies in the lubricin formation by the PR. G4 proteoglycan 4 gene and there is a symmetrical arthropathy which involves the wrist, elbow, knees, ankle and the hip and which is seen in 100% of the cases. Cervical joint is usually not affected and pericarditis is seen in 30% of the cases who have to undergo pericardiosynthesis. Now coming to the second genetic arthropathy that is a Mona syndrome that is multicentric osteolysis with nodulosis and arthropathy which is also known as the vanishing bone syndrome. It is also a rare autosomal recessive skeletal dysplasia caused by matrix metalloproteinase 2 deficiency. The characteristic findings are the coarse faces, that is the bullous nose, congenital cataract, coarse uh, flat nasal bridge, gingival hypertrophy, which are characteristic. The second part is the characteristic hallmark is the osteolysis of the carpals and the tarsals, due to which there is shortening of the digits, there is uh, skin laxity over it, and there is also camptodactyly, which is also seen. The lower limbs are predominantly more commonly involved, and you can see subcutaneous nodules in the palms and the sole. And if you do an X-ray, we can see the osteolysis of the carpal and the tarsal, and in the long run, it can cause osteopenia. And it also associated with cardiac defects such as DORB, septal defects, as well as coarcation of aorta. Now coming to the third uh, genetic arthropathy that is PRPP that is progressive pseudorheumatoid dysplasia which is involves the small peripheral joints and it can also involve the um, axial skeleton as well as the hip due to which there is an abnormal posture, disproportionate short stature, kyphoscoliosis as well as hip joint deformity and stiffness and it is caused due to WNT1 inducible signaling protein 3 which is known as the WISP3 gene which is responsible for maintaining the cartilage integrity by expression of the type 2 collagen. So there will be more of dysplastic changes and with this is a well thriving 8 year old child where we can see there is swelling of the PIP as PIP joints and there is a flex friction contracture. Also if you do a, a spine x-ray we can see uh, beaking of the vertebra with narrowing of the joint space. So concluding it we should suspect genetic arthropathy in a child who has got a second degree background history of a second degree consanguineous marriage, no infl inflammatory markers being normal, and the child is not responding to any of the rheumatic drugs. So we should sort the help of a genetist to diagnose this condition. Thank you.